On a cold December morning in 1987, a policeman named Philip Spencer saw and photographed what he believed to be an extraterrestrial being. But is there any truth to his story or is it all just an elaborate hoax? This is Ilkley Moor in West Yorkshire, England. Okay, stop. Can you hear that horrendous wind noise? Now that lasts throughout the footage that I filmed up here on the moor because it was pretty windy all day. So, to save your beautiful ears from complete obliteration, I'm going to narrate most of this story and interject every now and again when I get to sites or when something goes wrong that I think you might enjoy. So let's rewind and start over. This is Ilkley Moor in West Yorkshire, England, an eerie place steeped in mystery and folklore. There's hundreds of rocks and boulders scattered across the moorland with strange markings carved into them. There's also some strange stone circles and burial mounds. These carvings and monuments are said to date back to 4000 BC. Over the centuries, locals have reported all sorts of strange phenomena, from a family of giants living within these large rock formations, to weird creatures roaming across the moor and strange lights in the sky. One of these encounters would go on to make international headlines. Our first stop is one of the many stone circles that exist up here, and this will also be our finishing point we head back down here to camp for the night to see if we can capture some of these anomalies for ourselves. And this first stone circle is called Horncliff Enclosure. Wonder what this was used for? There is a little stream that runs down just beyond that ridge there. So whoever made it probably had a water source in mind. And you get a good view out across the valley. Although you can't really see much today because of the cloud, but you can see right across the valleys over there. Now, on to the next. This is that water source that I was telling you about. Don't know how I'm gonna cross it like. Might be able to get across there. Come here, mate. One, two, three. What could go wrong? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Thankfully, not much apart from me thinking that Heather was actually the banking at the other side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nearly went then, didn't we? I like it, didn't we? And this earthworks here, that's next to Horncliff Stone Circle, looks like this could have been an encampment, quite a large one, looking at it on the maps. And there's also an old dwelling here as well. Probably an old farmhouse at one point. And so we carried on upon this bleak moorland until something caught my eye. I think we've come at the wrong time, you know. <laughs> it's been hammering it down for weeks and the moorland is just saturated with these little streams that run through. And there's another sort of 
stone circle there, but just trying to figure out how we can get to it without getting wet. <laughs> There's no name to this, but I just saw it on the maps when I was zooming in to see what it was. It might just be an outcrop of stones. Or it might be a stone circle, or used to be. What are you eating? Give up. Eating chocolate raisins. It looks a bit like a circle. Or am I just trying to make it look like a circle? And then we carried on some more. This place is absolutely massive. I think it's about 40 square miles of moorland of bleak windswept moorland Woo. and it was at this point that I realised that I'd left it too late to get to the other sites that were over the other side of that ridge in the distance plus I knew the footage wouldn't look so great with it being a typical gloomy British winter day so I headed back down to Horncliffe Stone Circle to set up camp but don't worry, I came back a few days later and although the sun was shining, the wind was still horrendous. And this is the Cow and Calf Rocks and this is where a giant called Rumbold lived but that's a story for a different time. <laughs> And so we set off yet again across the wet and boggy moorland in search of our next treasure, the Badger Stone. Named the Badger Stone because apparently it's in the shape of a badger. <laughs> it has all sorts of cup and ring markings. You can't really see it on uh, when the light's not hitting it right, but you might be able to see the the swirls and stuff. Now the experts still don't know what these cup and ring marks are, but I have my own theory on what they are. But I need to do a lot more research first and that'll be in another video. So if you're interested in what I think it is, then you'll have to wait and see Now it's time for the story you've all been waiting for, the alien encounter. The story begins at 7am on December 1st, 1987. Philip Spencer, an off-duty policeman, set off across the moor to visit a family member in a neighbouring village. There were two reasons why he decided to walk across the eerie moors in the dark that fateful morning. It was an obvious shortcut and would take him considerably less time to make his journey. And as an amateur photographer, he hoped to photograph the glory of the rising sun, hitting the early morning mist which these moors were famous for. As a precaution, he packed a compass, as the miles of moorland can be unforgiving at the best of times. At some point in his journey, the sun had already dawned, which struck him as odd, as he didn't remember seeing the sun rise. Shrugging it off, he carried on towards his father-in-law's, when he caught a glimpse of something moving to his right. He swung around, camera in hand, and what he saw would haunt him for the rest of his life. Stood no more than 20 metres from him was a small humanoid creature, roughly 4 foot in height, with greyish green skin. At first glance, he thought it was a small child in a costume. But it soon occurred to him that this wasn't a small child at all. It was something else. Something he'd never seen before. It had a large head and 
big black eyes and greenish grey skin. It was gesturing to him with its hand as not to come any closer. Just before this creature scurried off over the embankment, Spencer raised his camera and snapped a single shot of the creature. He hurried after it, only to see a dome-shaped saucer shooting off into the sky, so fast that he was unable to take another picture. After the initial shock of what had just happened wore off, he took out his compass to get a bearing on his position. He was sure that it was facing north, but the needle was facing south. And not knowing these moors that well, and his compass now seemingly not working properly, he retraced his steps back down into Ilkley. Once he reached the village, he noticed all the people out shopping, and that the church clock read 10am. His journey should have only taken him less than an hour, but it had been over three hours since his departure. Unsettled by the events of that morning, he decided to get the film on his camera developed to see if he had captured anything on film. And he had indeed. After much debate, he contacted a UFO investigator by the name of Peter Huff. Huff was sceptical at first, but agreed to meet with Spencer. And after talking with him in person and reviewing the photo, Huff came to the conclusion that Spencer was indeed telling the truth, and an investigation ensued. The photo was first sent to a local wildlife expert who said it looked like nothing of the wildlife in the local area and it was more humanoid in shape. The photo and the negatives were then sent to Kodak Laboratories who confirmed that the photo was not tampered with in any way and what had been captured were indeed part of the original photo. Finally, the image was sent to the US for computer enhancement and further analysis. Dr. Bruce Maccabee, an optical physicist for the US Navy, concluded that the slow shutter speed used for low light conditions and the photo being captured handheld made the image too grainy for proper analysis and the investigation was drawn to a close. But the story doesn't end there. And this is the exact location of where that picture was taken. If you look closely, you can see the path going along there and you can see the stone to the left hand side, just there. And the alien stood in the middle of the path. And there he is, look, the little green man in all his glory. Over the next few weeks, Spencer started having strange dreams and was deeply troubled by the missing time he had experienced on that cold December morning. Huff suggested regressive hypnosis. Dr. Jim Singleton agreed to conduct the session on the 16th of March 1988, some three months later. Under hypnosis, Spencer recalled that upon seeing the creature that fateful morning, he was instantly paralysed. He was then lifted a few inches from the ground and pulled towards a dome-shaped craft, as if tethered like a child holding a helium balloon. When entering the craft, a voice told him to be calm. It was placed on a medical table in a white room where a group of small green humanoid beings performed medical experiments on him, inserting items into his nose and mouth. After these experiments, he was given a tour of the craft and shown a video. The film depicted apocalyptic imagery, including nuclear explosions, famines, floods, and the destruction of the human race. He was asked if he understood, to which he confirmed. Spencer was then shown a second film. He has never revealed the contents of the second film, alluding to it being too personal to share. Following this, Spencer was returned to Ilkley Moor, where he then took the infamous photo. He claimed that the alien was actually waving goodbye to him and not telling him to stay away, as he told in his original account. So, is this case a hoax? Or is it a real tale of alien abduction? 
The photo that Spencer took that morning cannot be debunked for the same reason it cannot be verified. It's just too poor quality. But what does bring some validity to this story is that Philip Spencer isn't actually his real name. It's an alias given to him by Peter Huff, as Spencer didn't want any exposure and has not made a penny from his story to this day. So what do you think to his story? Was it a real alien abduction? Or just another elaborate hoax? One thing's for sure, our ancestors thought this location was a very special, somewhat sacred place. It was a pretty uneventful night last night, a few planes going overhead but no aliens. <laughs> it's still pitch black outside so I'm going to pack up and do a bit of night nav to get home and get off to work. If you like this video, give a thumbs up won't you? If not, give a thumbs down and let me know why in comments. Anyway, thanks for watching.